returning 2.5 million pounds worth of revenue but giving half a million over half a million pounds to google amazon and ebay to get your customers this is a story a tale that curses way too many entrepreneurs how is it fair that the platforms are actually making more money than you how do we set this business up for profitability well i've got some solutions to that little quandary that so many entrepreneurs face find out by listening in Welcome back, gang. Um, um, JB's with me again as we co-host this podcast, helping entrepreneurs and business owners around the world, that are mainly from the UK, but I know we get listens from around the world. You actually done some analysis on that, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, you said we was very big in Abazajan or Oh, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, yeah. We, we were a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you were, um, yeah, 145 in, in uh, Azerbaijan. It was, uh, you were big in Nigeria. Yeah, um, number 50. Number 50 in Nigeria. Uh, Australia liked you. New yeah. Zealand liked you. Um, Canada liked you. America yeah. liked you. Uh, yeah. There's not a place on earth that's not a fan of James Sinclair. That's but we are definitely doing better in the UK, aren't we? Yeah. But also, do you know what? I like that because yeah. most of the big podcasts are in American. In, in American? Hello. <laughs> good, <laughs> good speaking. Good speaking. Like they're, <laughs> they're, they're talking about American businesses. So I think it's really refreshing to hear about UK businesses because otherwise it's like, oh, yeah, I got this store online and it's down at Trader's Village and all this sort of stuff. I don't know. What, <laughs> every impression is just like slightly camp. I don't know why I do that. Um, so I like the fact we're flying the flag for British entrepreneurship. God yeah. damn it. Do you know how many people live in the UK? Six. How many people do you think live in the 72 UK? million. You're, you're nearly right. 70-ish million now. Yeah. I think we're 69.7 million. So let's go 70 million. Um, I had someone come to one of my events from Australia. I actually had a few international visits to James Sinclair seminars. Some, one of them, I sat next to him for the dinner a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they yeah. flown in for dinner with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. From there, I, was, I was like, where are you coming from? Thinking like, oh. I've seen like this face. Milton Keynes. And she's like, yeah, we're flying in from Melbourne. I was like, pardon me? Melbourne because Australians always say things yeah, like yeah. it's got a question at the end of it because yeah, they yeah. go up at the end of their yeah. Melbourne I'm like are you asking me a question or yeah, telling yeah. me a statement I'm not sure that's a yeah. it's a long way she, mm. and she bought their video guy yes she did who is new and she's like oh that's our chads over there he looked absolutely exhausted that yeah, fella yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> he so then they came straight from the airport know, didn't yeah. they they came in from Heathrow they're like oh what? yeah we came straight in on the T5 it's fantastic and I was like oh you're good at the impressions <laughs> You're good yeah, at the impact. Although I've noticed, noticed, Nige, oh, a little smile there. Smirk. Is, uh, he's a smirker. Because I'm a bit worried it's only me and you that find me and you funny. I don't care. <laughs> I think that's all right. Yeah. At least we're having a good time, mate. I'm not bothered. Um, well, the reason I ask that, because um, population, chimney pots, I think yes. is one of the secret sources in terms of whether your business is going to be successful or not. Mm. The number of chimney pots you've got in an area, especially if you're building a location-based business, yeah. even if you're a bit naff, if you've got lots of people on your doorstep, you've got more chance yeah, of success yeah. um and i was talking to those people from australia they've got 26 million 27 million people yeah, something yeah. like that in australia and the country is absolutely yeah. ginormous it's bigger than europe and, yeah. ev and everybody lives on the outside yeah and yeah they live in melbourne sydney yeah. adelaide and literally like the coastal areas that's so kind i was of thinking if we went there there is a good chance we would just bump into margot robbie we might we might you're obsessed with this idea oh, right lovely yeah <laughs> and, uh, and, and i was thinking there's russell crowe who else is there? What, famous people in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Kylie? Oh, Kylie. No, she lives here now, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, Kylie still does her own cleaning. I does love she? that fact. What a load of rubbish. No, she doesn't. She her might own. say that on a chat show. No, apparently she does. Do the reason I mention it, because I proudly went down to the living room at the weekend and I said, my nan, nan sorry, my mother-in-law was there, children's <laughs> nanny. And that's when I said, I'm going to look like, because I'm doing a lot of exercise at the moment. Yeah. I said, by the summer... I'm going to look like Russell Crowe in Gladiator. That's my own. That's a very... Because he's fat now, Old by the reference way. point, yeah. Well, so you can, you can get in be, shape and then get back there I look again. like him now, but I want to go back in time Fine. to like Russell Crowe from Gladiator. Talk, talking of Australians who are in good shape, Chris Hemsworth, that'd be a good oh, aiming point for you. God, he looks good, doesn't he? He does look fantastic. He's got like a mega gym. Oh, he's, you've got a gym in your gaff. Yeah, yeah you've got, got no yeah, excuses. Yeah. There you go then. So guest today... Um, <laughs> How are we going to segue from, from your body... Um, and Australians to electronics. Well, Come the, on. the business lesson there is that if you've got a lot of people in your country, it's much easier to make money. Oh, okay, fine. Um, uh, I have nothing to do with this business. Um, well, that was it a little lesson. Good, so there you go. So the guest, Fun fact. <laughs> our guest today, JB, is Ben Ewart. He's got a business called Switch Electronics Limited. And in his own words, he said, do you remember Maplin from 
donkeys ago. They yeah. went bust, didn't they? Um, I think they do exist online I still. See. You must have loved the Maplin back in the day so when you were a, a kid's, kid's entertainer. Yeah, DJ, yeah. I was going there and get your disco ball and all that I was that literally stuff. in there buying fuses for snow machines and bubble machines. Yeah, and it was brilliant back in the day, wasn't an it? An electronic tape. Yeah, oh, I used to love all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. They used to have, in some of the good stores, like Bromley had a big one on the corner, yeah. and they'd have the music turned up right loud, and they'd have all the disco lights going on. And sometimes, like one of the one of the geezers in the corner, go and you just give it a little blast of smoke. Love it. Give it an atmosphere on a Saturday afternoon. Yes, Maplin. Yes, Maplin. So he's got Switch Electronics. Um, he's been going donkey's year. He's doing about two hundred thousand pound a month in revenue. Has he got any team members, JB? He has. He has got ten of those beauties working for him. Um, what do you reckon they do? Picking and packing. Yeah, I reckon so. I've seen some photos. He's sending so so nasty knowledge. He's very effective. He doesn't like the podcast, but he's very effective at getting people information. So I know people send me stuff now the day before we record. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen this gaff. It's it's proper. So like do, should, should, should we let Nige say like, hi, hi Nige? Hi guys, you all right? Yeah. So Nige works in my office with me and Chuds. Oh, and that's why he looks so miserable. Yeah. <laughs> now it all makes sense. So, so we, we, we can call him Producer Nige for producer the purposes Nige, yeah, of this like podcast. Yeah. We're going to try and get Chuds on. We're going to need like 20 microphones and then we'll just bring in people um, as we make the show. But yeah, so if you are coming to any of our events or any of our seminars, Nige will be the man that looks after you. Say hi. Are you two finished? We've got, yeah. we've got to try, help, try to help Ben Hewitt. <laughs> yeah, so Ben Hewitt, yeah. Um, so he's got 10 members. We think he, they'll be doing picking and packing and yes. all of that Based stuff. Based on the photos I've seen, and he needs 10 people picking and packing. The place is flipping enormous. Yeah, £2.5 million worth of annual turnover. We're going to have a little game now, JB. That's a lot of LEDs, us. isn't it? Light-emitting diode, in case well, you ever wanted to know. That's what I was going to ask you. I would like us to play a little game before we get Ben on the show okay we might get Nige involved in this there's three of us playing the game Um, what do you think his average order value is oh we're going to play higher or lower I know we don't actually know the information yet average order value I think it's going to be £27.50 what do you think uh, Nige (laughs) no no give us a number Thanks, Chuds. There's Thank coffee you. coming in. This is a lot. You've been served up, slammed on the table. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love a coffee that's So we've slammed. got £22.50. Thanks, um, he only went for the 50 because I went for it. He's trying mm. to nick my job and now he's nicking my numbers. He's off, Nige. What do you reckon then, Jim? You can have a jingle as well. I think you're very close. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, £26.50. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I didn't expect you guys. Usually people go a lot higher than this, but actually maybe you are more experienced than I think. So I'll tell you what Party Pieces is, because this is quite similar. Let's go in live here. Party Pieces is one of my businesses that does oh, very... Gonna get, we're going to get it live, right? With the very, live stats. very similar stuff to this. Um, um, you do balloons and he does LEDs. How is it similar? Well, because it's a distribution business. Oh, fine. Shopify has just crashed, which is... Uh, <laughs> uh, not I the whole Shopify. Have you crashed? That's how many things he's selling through party pieces. He's managed to crash Shopify. 7,000 staff, about 19,000 AWS servers dotted around the world, but party pieces has crashed it. Do you know why, didn't you? Why? It's all them bouncy eggs. All them bouncy, all them bouncy eggs. eggs you're flogging these days. It's um, today. Right, here we go. I'm just this trying. is good, live in real time. Uh, no, no, today. Um, Terrible let's go in here. View, fire, guys. view dashboard. I think our order value is. It, it, I'm really impressed that you used to guess this while that's loading up. Um, and then I will give um, an exact answer for today. Uh, oh, so 37.63 is today my average order value. What is Maybe, it generally? I'm going to change my £26.50 to £30 now. So it's. <laughs> You're cheating. You're using your own data to cheat. <laughs> because I think it, I've just got a, a hunch it's quite similar. Okay. Um, so what's his challenges in his business? Uh, challenge one, managing a product range of over 15,000 products and growing. That is that is a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Which, which sort of uh, justifies the gigantic space that I saw in the photos that he sent over. Um it then links into challenge number two, which is managing the rising cost the past two years, especially with wages, delivery and marketplace fees, which again, you mentioned at the beginning of the intro, how much he's paying in in those different marketplace fees. And number three, scaling the business without losing the profitability and moving warehouses. Wow. Moving warehouses four times in 10 years without the costs spiraling out of control. Well, I spoke to him um, and you spoke to him uh, before we came on air. Yes. And he said, uh, you know, as the business grows, we're making less profit. That is always what happens. Yes. So 
I'm afraid that's just the way it is. When he turns 10 million, his percentage will go down compared to when he turned a million. Yeah, fair enough. There, there is these tipping points where you grow into that next realm of turnover and then you get economies of scale with your middle management. Yeah. And this is why lots of SMEs go bust is because they either can't afford the middle management, it's too tough and they don't want to carry on, um, or thirdly, they burn through all the cash because they put the middle management in place. Yeah. What, what generally is the sort of, is it a cash flow figure? Is it a people figure that, where that sticky middle bit is? Well, it, what, what happens is some of these, some entrepreneurs bootstrap it so much and they exhaust themselves and it kills them and they do everything or they employ people. And this is where actually, we spoke about this on the last episode, venture capital and private equity, if they see this, they go, oh, all you need is a million pounds worth of people. Yeah. You haven't got the million pounds, but we have. So we'll put, <laughs> you know, a chief technology officer, a chief marketing officer in. We'll layer it with costs to absolutely, um, absolutely, absolutely grow the revenues over the next two, three years, and then it all comes back out in the wash. Right. But most small businesses who are bootstrapping just can't bring that chunky bit of knowledge or expertise or people resources in quickly enough absolutely and if they employ people you know i always say you have to kiss a few frogs to find your prince yeah sometimes um, and they i like the fact you always say kiss a few frogs to find your prince not princess or or your princess (laughs) um (laughs) the fact you always go for prince well because that's the story yeah i can't find (laughs) <laughs> I'm not doing some sexist talk here. No, I know you're not. I thought it was quite the opposite. The, it's the princess and the frog. Yeah, I, I, re- I realise yeah. that. Um, In but your relationship, are you the princess or the frog, do you reckon? Both. You are the... <laughs> both you. You're the frog. Have a word with yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a very attractive wife. <laughs> that was... I do. She is beautiful. She doesn't listen to any of your content. No, Chance, no, we Make sure we just clip that and send that to that. She Nats. is beautiful. No, Nats is beautiful inside and out she is a wonderful person oh, very Jesus strong-willed Christ. when's this coming out valentine's day have you forgotten no, no, no. she is she is a beautiful person she's very strong-willed and i'm strong-willed and so sometimes that beauty oh, can yeah. turn to hell <laughs> <laughs> but yeah she's um uh, she's certainly in my rock yeah i i can continue to do what i do because i know i have a very strong woman behind me jesus christ i was not expecting that today guys that was lovely <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the reason I was going down that route but anyway that's, it took a lovely turn didn't it for everybody a mm-hmm. um, couple more points about Ben before we bring Ben on uh, where do you want to be in one year's time we want to grow the turnover by 30% driven primarily by the B2B market and increase our stock to turnover ratio um, I mean I know all of what he's talking about here I'm like you're in, in this yeah. Yeah, yeah so do you feel businesses like this that are capital intensive because you've got to hold stock yeah, are they business you Should like? we have another guess? Here we Let's go. have another game. What the level of stock? Oh, sorry. That's, that's Nigel's um, selling jingle, <laughs> isn't it? Here we go. What level of stock? Do you think he's sitting on at any one time? Oh, that's a good What, in terms of value? Yeah, value. Or cost value, not retail value. Cost value, I think he's probably sitting on... Uh, 425,000. What do you think, Nigel? Mm, I think so. You saying five six five is Nige? You said what? Four twenty five. He's copying me with a five again. Flipping Nigel. JB, I think he's sitting on at least eight hundred thousand. Oh, he's gone high, guys. Uh, I just know because you always end up sitting on more than you want, and he's been going a long time, and he'll have a lot of deadlines there. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. I could be wrong here and I look really stupid and look oh, like I'm not so the oracle hoping, anymore. I'm so hoping that he's, he's doing £27.50 and I, 425 We've never done this little guessing no, thing here because listeners in a few minutes are going to find out all the answers. I know. What a hook. Chud's be happy because he likes hooking people on YouTube and stuff. Chud, mm. you're happy with the hooks? Oh, he's having yeah. a lovely time. Fantastic. As of the seagulls by the sounds of it today. Um, what does your business look like when it's finished? It will never be finished. Hey, that. It would never be finished. We have B2B competitors with turnovers in the billions, so there's endless potential for growth. Still hate it, even though there's endless potentials for growth? I don't mind that, but I just feel these seagulls are really loud today. They are, aren't they? We're, we're recording this in our studio, and there's, well, in our roller skating studio, and there's seagulls on the roof. They're very loud, um, which makes it difficult to concentrate at times. Um, I don't like business owners to not have business plans of when the business is going to be finished. 
and you must work to finish dates and then go again and create a nice bit this plan but everyone needs to be know what we're doing if we're just growing it's like my little metaphor it's like building a house without a set of architectural plans sounds like an absolute disaster to me never a good idea uh, do you make the profit that you want to make not quite since covid it has been to the eight to ten percent range which you mentioned earlier but we have grown turnover by an average of over 30 percent since inception prior to covid our profit margin was around 15 percent wow they've been here haven't they but I guess no, that's no, the no 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 well. no it's part of that will be because he's grown his business if he's moved his warehouse four times in 10 years, he would have had a little cheap warehouse. He would have been all tight and, you know, like the sort of person that goes for a meal and says, no, 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 I didn't have a starter. I'm not paying for that because that's what a bootstrapped entrepreneur does. Oh, I hate that. What, in a group meal environment? But when you haven't got any matter, then then things are good. It's all right. I didn't have a starter, but I'll pay my <laughs> equal pay. That's that's what happens, yeah. We all know that. That's we all what we know, yeah. Fine. Um, and so... so you know, well, also you, the increasing cost since COVID must have really hit product-based businesses. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, but I think it's growth. Part obviously bigger party, warehouses, bigger business rates, all those things. So with, with um, party pieces, obviously it's a similar in terms of sort of like the product delivery, holding the stock kind of model. Yeah, obviously, yeah. very different kinds of stock. You've never done the sort of grow into it thing. You've just gone in at a thousand miles an hour straight off the bat. But like next door, that's a that's a big old setup isn't it yeah but the, the warehouse you, you see here next door yes is just the dispatch we've got another big massive warehouse much bigger than that holding the majority of the stock so how much stock do you hold at any given time we hold around 1.5 to 2.5 million pounds worth of stock depending on the time of year really what cost of stock cost wow not, we not value of what it would be sold for yeah cost jeez so what do you and given what sector you're in do you need to hold on to that much stock yes because uh it takes time for stuff to be manufactured right you have to buy it in bulk um if you're buying it from overseas it could take six months to get here and if you haven't got stuff things go problems and that's my primary reason why we had inflation in 2023 was because there was a shortness of stuff because we are an importing country whatever yeah. country you was getting it from you couldn't get it in time and so everything was going through the roof and uh, inflation's dramatically coming down now because cost of products have come down okay so would you would you um would you go into another sort of like holding lots of stock type business or do you ex do you well, prefer let me experience tell you now, businesses Jamie, that let me tell you now i don't want to hold that amount of stock yeah but i don't see you have to. how you can it is another way of thinking about it, it's a moat around your business it does protect you because yeah. if you've got the stock and he, like me, um, doesn't have fashion lines. I mean, like, oh, here we go. Here, here we go. This trigger warning for anyone who doesn't my, like online bullying. My gilet, my gilet will Which last. You off. <laughs> Jeremy timeless. Clarkson. Yeah, it's timeless. <laughs> this little number uh, won't last. I mean, no one's going to wear that again outside of <laughs> last season, other than you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, um, and so what I'm trying to say is uh, fashion literally is a fashion line. Um, if you hold the stock and you don't sell it in the season, you're done for. Mm. But if you're selling little LED components, you don't have to really worry, I imagine, like me, that that's, you know, I've just bought in a 40 foot container of pinatas, you know, the donkeys yeah, that yeah, you yeah. hear. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about those going out of fashion and teddy bears. I bring in a million teddy bears a year. I repeat the lines every single year. What stuff do you have to worry about then? Is there stuff that is like if fashion clothes, technology? I mean, he is technology, but he's not. Um, you know, he's not Apple iPhones and Macs, is he? He's, gotcha. not, you know, he's, he's usable. Sold up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> proper proper stuff um day to day what do you do day to day in the business uh, recently it mostly includes managing staff procurement accounting and focusing on growth however i've always run the business very lean so i had to learn every role over the years and become a jack of all trades as the business has grown i have had to delegate some of my responsibilities so he's very much in the operating game he's in it and on it at the same time should we get him on yeah, let's get him on. Let's get him on. I like on. his questions as well. Oh. Let's make sure we ask them as well at the end. Yeah, definitely. Like sometimes you just forget. I don't. I ask him one killer question because I've got a jingle for him. I like all of them. All right, well, we'll do all the questions today, <laughs> yeah. Gay, because His Majesty likes them. Yeah. Um, ben, are you there? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. You're oh. very welcome. We, uh, we've we got some quiz questions that we need answered first and foremost. Yeah, I think we will do them. But before we do that... Before we do that, His Majesty doesn't want to do it in that order today. No, no. Ben, are you close to the microphone? You sound a little bit distant to me. 
Is that any better? That's much better. Thank yeah. you. It's just nerves. But before it's we uh, before we answer the questions, I think it's really important that you give listeners a little pitch to what your business is for about thirty seconds, because I think we hashed it. <laughs> ah, it's no worries. Yeah. So um, I, I know you mentioned briefly what we do. So we we uh, we sell electronic components. Uh, so it's all online. So we we uh, we supply schools. We supply supply hobbyists. Basically, anyone who's in electronics who is trying to repair a circuit or design a product, uh, we we sell. Yeah, and you mentioned we've got over fifteen thousand products. So we we cover things like fuses, cable, switches. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely more than I can really keep track of. Um, but yeah, that that uh, that presents its own set, own set of challenges. Um, but it's also you know it's also been it's, it's been uh, we've found a bit of a niche really in the market. So yeah, it's uh, it, so, it's so who's your um, avatar customer? I think that would help. Um, so if you're primarily not, when not we electricians. first started, we were beaters. No, not really. No, it tends to be electronics engineers and hobbyists really. Uh, so we, we don't actually do much with uh, electricians. Uh, that tends to be sort of you, uh, Edmondson Electrical and those retail outfits that, that supply them. So if um, I was building my own kit car, would I need you? Potentially, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 do, we do have plenty of parts that, um, that can be used in, in that, especially, especially uh, the electronics in the da- on the dashboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if I yeah, was in education and I was doing electronics, all them little LEDs and solder irons and solder and, you know, all of that sort of stuff, you, you help, yeah? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so that's, um, I, I, I often think the education's the best, uh, sort of the best fit for the product range that we that we have. Um, do, you, do you remember the, the, Robot the Wars? Remember Robot Wars? Yeah, yeah. Is that the sort of avatar of your sort of customer that's going to build their own little robot to have a fight? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've summed it up quite well there. Yeah, I'm good. sure. Uh, I'm sure that the people who um, who build the robots, they probably use plenty of the parts that we uh, uh, that we sell. Did, didn't um, didn't Robot Wars come back on telly a few years ago? From it memory? did, but it was rubbish because they they tried to mess with Matilda. Do you remember Matilda? It used to flip you yeah, over. Yeah. and It had like a chainsaw thing on it. Yeah, and there was that uh, killer lot, was it? That's right. They don't make it. They don't make them like they used to, do they? And these two are still single. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I knew it existed, but I never watched it. Did you not? You were too busy, weren't you? Uh, Yeah. Um, I was too busy going to magic club. (laughs) (laughs) Which is true. Uh, Right. Okay. So, uh, okay. So on those two avatars, is it the education business side of things that brings you in the most revenue? Is it that kind of a market? It's not a standout one. Um, it's definitely it's definitely one of our biggest. But we also do uh, we also supply the industrial sector. Uh, so that's things like emergency stop switches. Um, we supply the automotive sector. Um, so it's really quite a vast array of markets. Really, it's it's something which we've been trying to focus more on on a on a smaller amount. Uh, but oft, often these markets come to us and they want these parts and uh, yeah, you're not going to say no, you're going to supply them and uh, and you start looking who else you can supply in that sector. Got it. So we, we, we were playing some games, some little guesses with Nige and uh, JB. So we would like the answer to it if you know them. What level of stock do you sit on? Uh, so we've got £425,000 worth. Uh, no way. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Well, I'm joking. Oh, oh, God. God. Ben, you were just going back to become my favourite guest of all time. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Well, that would have been funny if it was. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so James was actually the closest. So we, we're, we've got £900,000 worth and that's that's not including what's what sort of uh, with suppliers and, and sort of in the middle of the... In, in the middle of the sea either so we usually have about £100,000 floating as well yep do you hate it? yes yeah because <laughs> you know that's all cash don't you? yeah yeah I mean it, it's been that is all it, profit it, I mean it's it, it's quite difficult in electronics because uh, we want primarily we try to go straight to the manufacturer to get the goods uh, and so you, you met with MOQs yep. and so more often than not you do buy more than you really need um, yeah. 
but it's it's quite a high gross profit a lot of these items so i mean there's, there's some products we sell where there's 90 percent gross profit so even if yeah, it but you've got to store take, it for a bloody year haven't you well, yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah um so you, me and you we, we see i know i know this stuff you know, you know like, his pain he, he's you got a gross profit but you have all these bloody overheads and that's why it comes down to eight percent net profit in your business okay so um so that's uh we got a little jingle to say i'm fantastic yep there you go <laughs> Right, now moving along um, to... Uh, average order value. Average order value. So, Nige said £22.50, or was that... He did. Yeah, you said £27.50, yep. and I said £30. Do you know what it is? Yeah, so if you combine all of our sales channels, it's actually £11. Oh. oh um, for our website, it's £31. Ah, oh, well, I was comparing websites, so that's a, oh, that's a correct amount. Oh, you uh... <laughs> <laughs> Because, I know, i tell you why, because I've done it on, um, I, I done it on Shopify, so I wasn't... Oh, fine. I wasn't comparing our Amazon sales, um, which are... But the actual answer is 11 It's interesting enough that all of our Amazon sales for party pieces are all sub £10. And all of our web sales are better. So that's another very interesting correlation mm. to our business and your business. Wouldn't you say that? But you so, kind of have to, you so have to be on them, don't you, unfortunately, with Amazon. Like you, you get yeah. a lower uh, average order value, then you're going to have to pay Bezos 30% for it as well. But you've kind of got to be there because people expect it. I think you have to be there because some people will only buy on Amazon and if they won't go direct to a website because that's just what they do. So do you fulfill f through Amazon then? Or does we Amazon have hold Prime. We, have, we do a little bit of FBA, which right. is fulfillment by Amazon. Uh, but we have, we, we have our own Prime account. So we sell teddy bears. and uh, On the Prime? Yeah, yeah, but we've got Prime status by doing it ourselves. What do you do, Ben? Do you do, do, let Amazon FBA it or do you fulfill? Yeah. yeah, so most of the revenue does come from FBA. Um, we definitely do see a massive uptake in sales if we convert an item to FBA. Uh, mm. we, we don't do it ourselves, uh, so we we do um, we do ship the the goods actually to Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so it's definitely something we would quite like to explore. Is the seller ful seller fulfilled Prime? Um, yeah, that's what we've got. Seller fulfilled Prime. I just so what, what hoops do you have to jump through for that? Do you have to prove you've got a, a the same day delivery so. with yeah, DPD yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever? Yeah, they, yeah you have and to they, do all and that. they look at it very closely. So yeah. if you're late, they'll tell you off and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is all the same. Um, it basically, what you just said there. The reason I don't do fulfillment by Amazon for all of our stuff is because you need to make sure you're choosing fast moving lines which I'm sure you've worked out haven't you Ben like stuff where you the stock is moving very quickly yeah it's um, I think we have around of, I think we have about 500 product lines in FBA yeah uh, but that's out of about 15,000 that we've got so yeah um, yeah it's definitely the, the, the fastest moving um, but generally speaking they do go quite well the FBA ones yeah yeah and it's cheaper uh, for for you to because if I'm couriering it doing it seller fulfilled I've got to pay a DPD cost yeah. whereas Amazon will mix it in with all the other Everything things and so, yeah. so it's but you wouldn't want to send 15,000 lines to Amazon pay for all their storage fees if you're not selling them fast enough and that's yeah. probably why you haven't done it isn't it Ben yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. I mean yeah um, yeah, you, you get you get some pretty big fines and fees if you start to uh, if, if you've got stock sitting at Amazon, so um, which I think would be inevitable if we ship them fifteen thousand different lines. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I think I think if you did sell a fulfilled on some of those lines, um, that that are slower, you might get some more customers just because people are just Amazon trained, aren't they? Especially Amazon Europe people that might be prepared to pay for that component. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. It's definitely something we've talked about in the past. Is doing seller fulfilled Prime. So, yeah, I think it, I think it would be a, a great fit for the products which we don't send to Amazon. Because then, could you just list it and you know, if the sales trickle through, they trickle through, and if not, you're not sort of at at any sort of like major loss. Yeah, I think well, to a degree, without getting too complicated, because listing costs money. It's a lot of time. Um, and I, I'm not sure, I can't remember. Do you probably know Ben more than me because I'm not into our Amazon as much? You have to pay to list stuff as well, don't you? Um, or is yeah, that just there eBay? is all sorts of little add on fees. Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, the Amazon so product, uh, the way they make money is unbelievable. They make because you have to pay to like their own PPC, yeah, to actually oh, get sales. About 30%, doesn't it? Something oh, like bloody that. wish. 
Was it more than that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, do you feel like you make 30% net profit off of an Amazon sale? Definitely not. No. Definitely um, not. No, I, I feel like we make about 8% net profit off of Amazon. Really? By the time you've paid all the, the storage fees, the, the PPC costs, you know, uh, getting the stuff out but, you know, and all the, the uh, freight costs. Yeah, I don't believe you. Mate. Anyone's making 30% off of Amazon. Just a good tagline on the website. Do you, do you, Ben, what do you roughly work out you're making? Uh, um, Amazon tends to be sort of six, seven percent. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's the, yeah, uh, it's the, the fees they take and the, they just get you from every single avenue yeah. with fees. So, yeah. And you don't even so own difficult. the customer. That's the other joke exactly, of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you'd like to email Ben and James at lose the will to live.com, <laughs> we will tell you all about our Amazon stories. Do you do clever stuff though? Like if you're doing seller fulfillment, do you put information in there so they can book with you direct and then they can scan a QR code? What are you trying to make me get my lose my prime status no, no, by saying, asking is, me is questions that, like is that this? What you would do. You I can't do. agree or deny to that. Claims. Okay, fine. No, he doesn't do that, Jeff. If Jeff is listening, because I know Bezos is a big fan <laughs> yeah, he's of a this business <laughs> broadcast. He loves it. Oh, dear. He's doing his transcendental meditations or whatever he's up to these days. Um, yeah, but I, I do think Amazon is very difficult. But we, I don't know what you do about this, Ben, but this is our own, and I don't care if they do chuck us off for this, we sell for more money on Amazon than we do on our website. Would you Do you do the same? We're about the same at the minute. Um, so our Amazon and our um, our direct sales are both about 30% of our revenue. Mm. Um, definitely, we, we saw a massive jump in sales last year on Amazon, uh, and the website was definitely... Uh, it was increasing at a bit of a slower rate. Uh, we still we still saw about twenty percent growth last year on the website, but um, yeah, it's just it's just so easy um, just to get immediate sales on Amazon. Whereas yeah. ov- obviously on the website, it's uh, it takes time to to get the traffic and to build the customer base. But were you asking about the actual price, the listed price. Yeah, so, on so the we sell I don't know a pinata on Amazon for twenty quid. We sell it on our website for fourteen. Yeah, so um, we, we are we are cheaper on the website, yeah. which is sort of uh, that's the frustrating part. It's because you you know you can offer the customer savings, but the you know a lot a lot of the customers are so stubborn that they won't they yeah, won't yeah, change right. the and habits. Beats, don't they? Yeah, pay for commit. Yeah, I actually was listening to a, a podcast about Amazon. They used to be about best price. Now it's about trust that you're going to get the stuff, and if it goes yeah. wrong, you can you know that's why people. Well, they just but, give you a refund without even asking. Yeah, yeah. They? They're just like, we yeah. had you know, like 70 quid worth of coffee that didn't turn up at the office. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, we delivered it. All right, it didn't turn up. And they're like, fine, here's your money back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, they're they're just, it's just a cost of business. Huge brand loyalty yeah, when they do that yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, so that's the end of the game. So let's try and grow this business. Um, uh, uh, managing a range of over 15,000 products and growing. Um, what, what, why is that a challenge? I guess it's the workload because uh, we've got to photograph all the products, we've got to write descriptions, do specifications, and uh, you know if, if if we're not if we're not broadening our product range, then um, we know that the competitors are, so we could we could potentially lose uh, lose a bit of market share. Okay, so uh, what what? Well, you don't want, I mean, I'm trying to understand what the, so you think you need to grow the product range, but you don't want to grow it, but you have to grow it to stay in the game. Is that yeah. sort Yeah. Of- I mean, a, a lot of our customers, they want to buy all of the parts from one, yeah, uh, absolutely. From one shop. Yeah. Um, and we, we've got some of our com- competition, they've got a million different product lines, some of them even, even more than that. Um, so that's, that's sort of how they you know, the, how they have such a large customer base is because the customer can get everything from that store. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't think we'd ever go to that extent because we need a heck of a, yeah, we need a, a heck of a lot of money and a, heck, a massive website as well. But um, yeah. Do you know there's, there's I mean, the, the three golden rules of retail is price, convenience and range. They're, 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 that's basically what makes retail happen. And you're a retailer, aren't you? You're an online retailer, but you are. Yeah. So if the price is right, and the convenience is there and the range is there you win the day and I'm afraid I'm afraid that is just part of your business isn't it I suppose when we've grown Teddy Tastic and Part to Pieces and that part of our business as we've increased the range the sales have increased 
and it's annoying, but it is what it is. I don't think I can help you there. Is there a case that the people that you get it supplied in from that you could be, um, you know, because obviously the, the sort of the the knock on effect of prices is, is happening at every stage of that um, sort of product life cycle. Could you be going to them and saying, right, we need better descriptions, we need better images? Could you get that from suppliers? Is that like a thing, or is it fairly standard that an LED just turns up in a plastic bag and you've got to do all the other stuff? I don't, I don't know this space at all. Uh, I think it depends on the supplier. We, we've got some suppliers, um, especially ones in the UK and, and sort of mainland Europe, which help us and we can, we, they provide images and um, we don't get descriptions off any, um, but they do, they do supply a few bits of information, but uh, definitely products which you, you import from the Far East, you don't, you don't really get anything. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, you've got to do it all from scratch, really. Are you with your importing from the Far East? Are you going out there and sourcing? Yeah, so I've, I think I've probably been out three or four times. Um, so you, you, there's there's a few trade shows which I've been to. Um, what was, part? Was, what part of China do you go to? It tends to be Shanghai, yeah. uh, Ningbo. Yeah. Uh, do you go to EU? To Shenzhen a few times. Yeah. Do you go to the EU market? No, I've not been to that one, no. It's all in that region. But yeah, I mean, that, that I thought it would be coming from there. Um, what, you're all the photos and the photography, why don't you get them to do it? It costs you like a dollar for them to do amazing photography. It's, it, to be honest, it's never been something which we've really explored. Um, well, I'm going so I'm I'm to I'm gonna put on the screen now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I, I'm going to show JB, but I just had these all done in, in the Far East. Look at this photography. Of all this stuff. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all done. We'll put that up on the uh, so people can watch so this. So they will do it if you ask them to do it for you? It's like a dollar. Fantastic. So you can have 500 images taken yeah. for 500 to to $1,000. So would they write you the a description? Apps. No, no, but I think you need to do that. You, but, okay. But there's this little thing called AI. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of the rumours. Yeah, so you could just put in like the 10 things and just say, make this sound better. Bish, bash, bosh. Yeah, write it in uk english for me yeah have you tried that is it the, is it the actual manufacturer that's taking the pictures or, um, no 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 my it? team um found i mean uh, we've got a team in uh, in the far east now in that area though but they, they are 10 a penny in the far There's east loads of them who do product photography as well isn't yeah there? just send them all your products you know just say just send them from the uk put them in a little fedex box and say take me pictures of all this stuff please um it, and they will do it all for you all my teddy bears, I do everything. I mean, just, in the UK, even if you want to pay the price, it's a lot of bloody work because you've got to send someone from your team and then they like, might be booked up six months in advance. Then the other option is you do it yourself. Yeah. But you're just going to get someone in your team that's just a bit shit at doing it. Because <laughs> there is a specialist skill to this yeah, stuff. Yeah, product photography you know, is very you, specialist. You've got to do 10,000 hours of practice like Chad's yeah. making videos and you, you know, editing podcasts. You've got to know some stuff, haven't you, to do it well. Yeah. Why are you speaking to me? Just wait for an insult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for an insult. It's, you know, I, I, if I was making a podcast, I'd wanted to get someone that knows to press record when you start a podcast, for example. Just, that's just maybe double check again. I said, no, I've done it this time. <laughs> yeah, I've done it this time. <laughs> but yeah, but I would be doing, there's a little, some little hacks for you there. We'll we'll put them overlaying um, just how easy that is. But do you know what? Outsourcing that sort of stuff to Vietnam, to the Philippines, you know, there's some really good marketing people that will do all that stuff for you. Um, I would definitely tap into that now the one I, I wanted to talk to you about how i would grow this business because you said your challenge number two is managing rising costs over the past two years especially wages delivery marketplace fees see how the business without losing the profitability and moving warehouses four times 10 years without cost um i said at the beginning of this podcast when you grow a business the pence that you make per pound in terms of profit does shrink mm. you know tesco's are making between 1.4 and 3 percent net profit on each basket sale right are you there hello are you there ben hi, hi there yeah yep. so just making sure they listen so as you grow you 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 just always have more management costs which burn through some of the profit so i would be looking at two parts of your business i'll be making sure that your gross profit stays strong and i think it's really important that you track that all the time are we producing monthly management accounts? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I do profit and loss at the end of each month. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 
I only started doing that probably a couple of years ago. Um, so that's definitely helped a lot just to look at, you know, more up to date information than looking at swing until you've done your accounts. So, so what I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that just absolutely essential what i would be doing if it was my business i would be tracking some more metrics i'll be tracking average order value um on a on a monthly basis across all the three platforms and then combined but also wholesale order values if you're supplying education and stuff so that you can really track that so you've got four or five different average order values that you need to track amazon ebay direct web sales and then wholesale as well and then a combined big mama of all of those um then I would want to be tracking my net profit, my gross profit, but also in this, I think it's important because you're growing, your operating profit. So your operating profit would be before all these unusual sales. So before you, uh, sorry, unusual costs. Before you, if you've invested in some swanky new software so that you can see that your operating profit um, is higher than your net profit because of all your one-off sales that you're doing, one-off costs that you're doing as you grow the business. Does that make sense, Ben? Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's some that, that's some really good points. Because um, I think yeah, you I will think then I've... feel a bit more motivated. Well, my net profit's lower, but my operating profit's getting stronger. It's only getting lower because I'm doing all this stupid stuff like buying a new warehouse and the rents are going up or i've employed a new marketing person put all of that underneath operating profit still important to track but you want to make sure that the businesses gps and operating profits are still good yeah i mean last year we got hit with quite a big dilapidations yeah bill. exactly that um, yeah. yeah so that, that know, then you say, that's the, a yeah. one-off cost yeah for those that are that are just listening to this podcast we'll explain what that is so i'm guessing ben left a warehouse and the landlord said here's a dilapidations bill for leaving this warehouse you've got to pay it is that correct yeah yeah i mean we did get stung especially hard um because we we took a when we first um we, we left halfway through the lease fine uh, and and the lease was assigned to a new tenant um and basically our our, our solicitor didn't uh, the lease we signed when we moved in the, they didn't uh, they didn't advise us to get a condition report done yeah that, we would call that a schedule of condition very advisable yeah. you want to get photographic evidence of what it looks like so that you can fight those wars more effectively yeah. so we we ended up paying for uh, repairs for damage which we didn't do basically yeah. it was already it was already like that when we moved in um so we we got we got a bill for cleaning the roof for instance when it's never been cleaned in 15 years yeah um classic so, yeah it's criminal um, i'm hoping was, that i'm hoping that there is some reform on that nasty thing um with governments and laws um one of the things though ben i mean you should now be ta you know this business probably could buy its own freehold with the profits and and uh, how long you've been trading you should absolutely put that in your mind's eye to achieve that because then you never have to worry about the lapidations again yeah we, we would love to buy a place um i think uh, the, the the issue is obviously getting the the money together for a deposit uh the, the warehouse we're in at the minute is about seven thousand square feet yeah um so i think if we if we were to buy a warehouse we'll you know we definitely need a large a larger size so you, you, we're going to be talking quite a lot of money to get um uh, t to get a deposit for a mortgage well maybe not maybe not my friend uh there's many ways to skin a cat and i'm going to tell you a few of them now so if you I'd need if you had a ten thousand square foot warehouse is that what you're thinking that you need in terms of space yeah i, I would say so probably yep um even if you could buy the one that you're operating now for 7,000 square foot um, and you then rent it out to someone else and grow into a 10,000 square foot one, doesn't make a difference because then it just gives you property income uh, as you go through your little life. But I would be going to your bank manager now and saying, look, can I borrow the deposit over five years and the term loan over 20 years? Is that possible? Um, or I would be speaking to my finance broker, which uh, Nigel is going to introduce you to, where you might take a business loan out for the deposit, hold that cash in the bank. Um, and then when you, an opportunity comes along, you then take a term loan out for the balance. Well, that's that sounds a lot. Sounds a much better option than just sort of saving up thirty percent for a deposit. Yeah, 
the, the, the option yeah. is just try and find the bleeding thing that you can buy and then work out how you're going to get the money. That's what a true entrepreneur will do <laughs> and that's what I want you to do. Um, actually, in my experience about buying commercial property is finding them is much harder than actually getting yeah. the money together. You're doing this for trade, not investment. You know, If you're making profits consistently every single year and you've been trading for a multiple number of years, a bank should bloody help you buy the property that you operate out <laughs> of and you stamp your feet until you get what you want. Yeah, I mean, um, that, that was quite a, uh, definitely finding the products around here is, uh, finding the warehouse is especially hard. Um, no, the backstop to that, sorry, can I just say, like, if you find a way, but if you rent somewhere, try and do a lease option. And I've used that little yeah. trick up my sleeves where you lease it with a guaranteed option to buy it. Cause then you can go to the bank yeah. and say, look, I've agreed to buy this for a million quid. It's now worth 1.5 million. Um, because I've got a lease option and they'll use that equity as the security as long as you're doing it as a trading business. They absolutely will not do this for investment, but they will do it for trading businesses. If they like you, they believe you and they're there's proven profitability and serviceability there. I think um, one, one thing we wish we're going to struggle is to actually find a property. I think um, when you're looking at a warehouse, one thousand to two thousand square feet, there's there's plenty in the area. Uh, but when you when we were sort of looking for warehouses, ten thousand square and bigger, ten thousand square feet and bigger, it's uh, yeah the they're not that common anymore. So well, I, one uh, or two a year will come up. Um, I promise you that and. All you need to do is start working out that that's what you want. And I don't know why they always then end up coming. But if you're telling yourself, and I, I do mean this, there's something a bit woo-woo in this. No, yeah. they'll never be available. They'll never be a freehold available. I never have the 30% deposit. You know, just no. Just make it happen and it will that's happen. That's what I want and then it will come and find yeah. you. Because you've got the good news. You know, you've got an established business that's doing two and a half million of revenue. You're paying the rent. You know, most bank managers will go, do you know what? I'm going to fight the credit committee for this if they really like you. And I, I'm talking to you. you. You sound like a trustworthy person. I don't think you're going to run off with the money. You're just going to want to pay the bank back. Um, and, you know, if you give a personal guarantee, uh, recovery loan schemes, there's plenty of government-backed schemes that will help with something like this. So um, our our lease is up in two years. Would you would you wait uh, to try and cross over with when the lease is up, or would you just would you? Just well, I would try it? and I would be speaking to your landlord now, saying, "Can I buy this building off you, even if it's not big enough for you?" Because you you might be able to get a good deal with that, and then you you get another one, and then you rent that one out, and that's how I would do it. You would keep owning them and building them up as as your pension pot. Yeah, that's well. I mean, it definitely sounds easier than than we were anticipating. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm afraid this is what human beings love to do: is they like complicating stuff so that yeah. it doesn't happen. Yeah. No, it's. Um, I think it's always been a bit of a. It's always been quite a hard. It's always been seen like a bit of an impossible task when you look at the cost and that. But yeah, that's. Uh, you've definitely presented it in a way that's more. Um, you know, that's more more attainable i guess i think the little phrase for this for every winner there was a beginner and if you want to win this you've got to just start think right what are the the little steps to doing this you know i always wanted to own a zoo and a visitor attraction and do stuff like this but you know i realized that i need to be a kid's entertainer first to get my little steps of success but thinking bigger gives you a distinct advantage and what you're doing is small thinking and so you're getting small results um, which annoys me really because you built a 2.5 million pound business which not many people do my friend so you obviously are achieving good things um how did you get your first customer in this business by the way i'm just fascinated how you started yeah so um when i was younger i wanted to career in golf uh so essentially i started this business just to give me a bit of uh, a bit of money which would fund uh fund playing golf uh so i i started it on ebay Wow. Um, I think it was probably about 19 when I started it. Um, and how old are you now? I, I'm 30 years old. Hey, this is great. So in, a, in 11 short years, which is nothing, you've built a £2.5 million business from putting your pants on and selling some LEDs on eBay. Yeah, I mean, you, I definitely didn't see or it. Or did you not put your pants on? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is USP. I mean, when you, when you look at the average, I mean, 
a few years ago, the average order value was six, seven pounds. So, uh, yeah, it's, there's, I think today we've done two and a half million orders. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, I don't think it's a business which you would perhaps recommend to other people because there's a heck of a lot of labour involved in sending Send yeah, that many orders and but it will get better uh, and better in the next 10 yeah. years you'll just ex, you know you'll you'll work out all that stuff i mean you go into china and sourcing products most people don't do any of this stuff buying a bloody warehouse should be bloody a piece of cake to you well, I, I, I quite enjoy going to china so um yeah yeah, yeah it's not a it's yeah, but what i'm saying is a, most people yeah. go no 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 i ain't doing that i'll just buy off uk suppliers i'm not going to make my own yeah. stuff i'm not going to send ten thousand pounds over to a chinese supplier that i've never met before and actually work out how to do all of that so you buying your own warehouse should be a slam dunk in my opinion w would you um would you consider a, a new warehouse or would you always look for a, yeah I'll look at well, anything when i say new i mean uh, get one built or would you always look for and a, i don't do that but i'm not saying you shouldn't do that because i don't like the stress of building things so it yeah. always goes wrong takes a long time and it'll detract you from your business but i'm not saying that you know you you might be an accomplished builder um i'm definitely not no fine so yeah i would probably <laughs> buy one that's already there so you can get on running your business because that's where the real profit is now there are ways that i would grow this business um i i thought of lots of ideas yeah we're doing website we're doing ebay we're doing amazon you're paying all these platforms half a million pounds a year to get your customers that's what you told you us and J uh, me and jb at the beginning yeah yeah we know that about 30 percent of the overall sales is into trade so schools bigger businesses yeah yeah that's right yeah i would probably get someone one day a week to hammer the phones and ring round avatar customers so ring round colleges ring round schools then send them a catalog and a letter with maybe a few leds in the post and some actual freebies saying look if you order from us here's a 20 pound voucher just order from us for your next college or school pie <laughs> trying to find the words here mm. but i think they could explode the growth of this business yeah i mean it's definitely it definitely seems a, a lot more attractive to uh to, to try and win win those businesses rather than someone spending five pounds um how would you how would you uh how would you go about uh, finding the customer information would you uh would you would you just use google or no i would I would probably data companies that would have all of this yeah, information already but there. I would probably do it a bit more old school than that. So start where you operate. So you're the, in the county of what county are you in? East Yorkshire. We're, we're based in Hull. Yeah. So I would ring Hull Secondary School. I'm sure there is one there. Yep. Or college, and say, "Can I speak to the person that's in charge of woodwork or what? What do, was that called now? Resistant materials. They call it didn't they, these days or something like that." resistant do they really yeah 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 i'm sure it is yeah i would ring that department um resistant materials <laughs> uh and say um hi we're, we're based down the road from you we supply leds and all the sorts of things that you would need for your woodworking technology class i remember doing all that stuff at school yeah. um we'd love to supply you i just want to send you a voucher for 25 pounds to buy some stuff from us and a few little freebies then you get into that teacher and then you ask that head of that department do you know any other head of departments at other secondary schools because they absolutely will because teachers no teachers like yoga people know yoga people karate people know karate people and so the the thing goes um and i would then find out if you can be on education supply lists this is going to take a bit of time to work this all out mm. but once you're over the line and you've got them because they'll just keep on buying from you they'll keep on buying another 500 pounds worth of electrical components every term imagine if you had a hundred secondary schools doing that at colleges that's what i would be doing to grow this business and that's how i've grown teddy tastic and party pieces i go into the trade and i go to the conferences i, I how many exhibitions are you doing we, we don't exhibit any uh we just yeah I've only many, you don't do many or any we don't do any exhibiting so, i think exhibitions for wholesale and trade you know is 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 very powerful mm. there is there is probably half a dozen in the uk which we put, could potentially do 
Um, a lot of the big ones tend to be in Germany, so that seems, uh, yeah. No, no, but you're, you're not looking, yeah. this is not, um, so like people like them, you know, them robot wars, like meet up and things like that. I would yeah, probably yeah. try and have a little stand there just showing you style, you, you know, just that sort of stuff. And I haven't got enough time to really go into it, but some proper network marketing. That's what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. isn't it, JB? That's the example here um network marketing is really powerful and you know you can just send out vouchers to schools and colleges they'll come on your website they'll spend their 25 pound voucher then you follow up with direct mail actually put some stuff in the post to them three or four times a year very powerful mm. very very powerful great thing as well that independent schools are sort of getting less and less now you know they're being owned by academy trusts and stuff so it's yeah. probably like a yeah. centralized procurement so you get one person. school you get five That's it. yeah yeah absolutely so you could probably go to them and don't um, be scared about yeah. getting in the car and going and seeing them yeah, we've got charlie who works at teddy nastic full-time job is going out seeing our trade customers she does demonstrations she so we we make loads of children's arts and crafts products as well so we like show them how they make the slime or how to use this arts and crafts thing how to do that what activities you can come up with i'll be working on all of that so look these are great activities that you could do with the class um using our components mm -hmm. so you actually come up with a little lesson plan with them which then brings me on to my next thing you if you're prepared to spend half a million paying these platforms what are you doing for content marketing because it's the hobbyist space which is where content marketing sits most yeah we uh i mean when we uh for the website most of the marketing we do uh most of the budget goes on um on google shopping yeah paying zuckerberg um, and larry and serge and <laughs> and jeff bezos all this ppc money which i think you should be doing still by the way i don't think you should yep. stop doing that but I think you should have a content marketing strategy. You should be making YouTube videos, explaining people how to use this stuff. You know, you should have someone full time doing that. Do you that. remember years ago? This is when we had our first dalliance together. There was a fella who dalliance. What does that mean? I think that's a new word for me. It means like a like a, a relationship. Oh, right, dalliance, yeah. like an enjoyable relationship. That's what yeah. we're having. We're having a dalliance. Right, I like um, that. There was a train fella who came on the podcast. And he was doing exactly that. No, that's exactly it. Doing rocket half railways. A rocket railways. That's fair. He was doing half a million quid from it was all YouTube videos he was doing, wasn't it? Well, no, he didn't do YouTube. I got him into doing content marketing, and he hasn't looked back since. Right. Okay. Jason Thickpenny is his name. That's the fella. There you go. Was Check. that model railway? Was it? Yeah. Which is in your, you know, the, this hobbyist space. Yeah. Like stamp collectors or people that like karate or people that like fishing, you know, that is really easy for content marketing to work for you because people discover you, they love you. They're already looking for it. They're proactively yeah. trying to search you out or search yeah. thing that you could do. You know, I'm making a model robot. You know, you could create competitions and events for like the electronics. Like in five years' time, you could have your own event in in the UK for electronicsy people, and you sell all your own gear at there, and it makes them really loyal to the brand. And that's what Rocket Railways have done so well. They're, they're, they, like you, started on eBay. Okay, I've I've not come across them before, but we we do supply quite a bit to the model railway markets. Well, you should do a co check him out, Rocket Railways, Jason Fickpenny. Nigel, can you... Um, That's another good thing to do, to affiliate or to partner up with people. So if, yeah. they're, if they're already doing content marketing, if you're like, that's a bit of a stretch for me to get going to start with, yeah. go to people who are already making great content marketing, say, hey, I'd love to give you all this supplies. A lot, a lot of the, like, the kids' toy channels and stuff, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. you know, Mattel yeah. sent me this thing and I'm going to smash an egg open and yeah. talk yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It explodes brands. What will stop you, though, um, Ben, is that you won't see immediate results from it. And that's why yeah. most people stop. But... Just remember, I'm spending half a million pound a year to get customers. If I spent fifty thousand pounds a year on content marketing, a podcast, YouTube videos, TikTok videos, just all of it, I mean, it, it will literally explode the growth of your business. Mm -hmm. And then I reckon you'll end up spending three hundred grand a year making content because you yeah. want a full-time videographer, a, a, a full-time presenter, and you just keep making stuff, and it, it just will. Because this is the hobbyist space. It's, it is the best space for content marketing. I guess as well, making YouTube videos, you can um, you can chop the video up and you can use it for Facebook and put it on the website. And Yeah, so I mean, I'm not a bit... I think everyone says that because that's what you should be doing. 
but I think you just make the right content for the right platform if you really want it to work. Mm. I mean, we do okay. a bit of that with this podcast. We take the trailers and the, the snippets and put it onto Instagram. But, you know, really for this space, Chuds and I have this little phrase that's, um, it's not ours, I can't remember where it comes from now, but we always say short form content funds your ego, long form content funds your bank account. And that okay. is mm. so true. YouTube videos, long form YouTube yeah. videos, and long form podcasts and books get you the best people. And short form could drive a lot of traffic for this yeah, market. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there yeah. will be people who are looking like tripwire LED, them. LED yeah. hacks. Yeah, like tripwire them into coming and finding your other longer form. Which stuff. I have to say, we we are seeing the results of that. Yeah, but but what people you should always get into the habit of making good quality long form content. Yes. And then repurpose, almost repurpose in reverse. So make a great quality long form product. Because what a lot of people are starting to do now is they're making long form content with a view to how they're then going to cut it up. That's yeah. the wrong way to think of it. Make a great end product. So if yeah. you can't repurpose yeah. anything out of it, yeah, you're still it. proud of that 30, 45 minute, 60 minute YouTube video. And if you get a couple of shorts out of it, that's a bonus. But you need to you need to go into it with making a good end product in mind rather than thinking of repurposing up front, I would say. I mean, everyone wants to hack the system don't yeah. they like we always want to find the shortcut but they they always find you out don't they yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and a newsletter and and um you know giving your customers advice oh yeah email marketing you're doing any yeah. email marketing we've not even touched on that yeah we do yeah i mean um we we have a heck of a lot of um contact uh, email addresses i think it was about three be about three years ago, eBay stopped giving you their email addresses. Uh, so we've got before then literally over a million email addresses, uh, which we, we wow. don't do anything with those ones uh, just because of things like GDPR and sort of uh, uh, other regulations now. Um, but we do we do uh, we do do email marketing for the for the uh, the customers that opt in. Um, it's it's a bit frustrating when you've got a you've got a database of one and a half million customers and you're sort of thinking can we do anything with it? I, I would I would find out have a chat to a GDPR expert, but I reckon if you get those people to re-opt in, oh, well, why do you have a, oh, Sorry, I, my understanding of GDPR is that they're not cold. They've actually bought from you and they know you and they've transacted they've with you. Bought from a third party, so I don't know if that in that instance there they've bought through eBay, oh, not God. through not through Ben. I, and I might be wrong on that. Lose the will to bloody live here. I mean, <laughs> I think I, I mean not, ask for forgiveness, not permission. Uh, well, maybe, but <laughs> I just think they have bought from you, and I don't think that yeah. is like cold, cold. Give them value, like yeah. content videos like education and then your sales will just you'll become front of mind you know because you're probably doing that traditional online retailer thing of you, you're just blasting out every month with hey here's our latest offers yeah you've got you've got to warm that audience up like i say if you, if yeah. you did have that content marketing hey we've done a collab with rocket railways hey we've done a collab with whatever it may be um and give them some news and give them information give them inf give them yeah uh, value first and then sales will come as a, as a byproduct yeah. and then and then equally you could say right your content cadence through the email can be right we'll do we'll do three bits of value then a sale three bits of value then a sale then people actually want to receive the information and the thing that like gdpr and email sort of mailing service hate is is opt-outs and bounces so if you're yep. given a, enough value that you you know that size of a list you're going to get a decent number of bounces and and uh, unsubscribes but if if that percentage is low in relative terms and then, then you know you've got untapped potential there but you're so lucky i, I don't the, the opportunity here that's being missed is is absolutely astronomical because mm. people were interested in this space because it's hobbyist stuff so like arts and crafts right so say we're gonna we're gonna make some slime today and we're gonna use this ingredient so we we sell all this on our website and then you just carry on doing it. that is as much as you need to do yeah mm. I mean, we do find when, when we do do email marketing, we, we get a much better engagement rate with uh, with sort of if you send someone tips and guides rather than making exactly it salesy. That. Yeah, exactly so, that. Um, yeah, you, like you like you said, sales come off the back of that. You're in the choir, right? Um, um, have we got any questions that need to be asked, Ben? Do you, do you want to ask us anything? Over to you, JB. Um, yeah, you had five questions. We've only we've got to wrap up surely, Ben. We've only got time for one. But if you've got one killer question, because I've for no other reason I've got a fancy jingle um, so if you could go through your list of questions if there's one killer question you'd like to ask to 
himself an online e-tail tycoon, James Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> James Sinclair. What would that one question be, Ben? Okay, so I'm just looking at the questions. Which one there? Uh, which one to shout out? I think um, I think the top one was. Um, it seems that uh, with the government, they don't really encourage businesses to grow. Uh, it's, it seems sort of. Um, it seems sort of the, you know the, the larger the larger you grow, the more they take. Um, so the question was, what what do you think the government has to do, has to change to encourage it? to encourage businesses to grow oh god here he goes well where do we oh. start where do we <laughs> start um, on that soapbox. i mean i agree with you i think the government are very good at supporting big business um the the top well there's only there's only seven thousand five hundred companies that employ more than 250 people in this country and i think they're given you know generous support which annoys me, the, the medium-sized business, which I put you in, that could be our next Cadbury's, our next Dyson, our next JCB, should be given bucket loads of support to grow their business. And it should be easy to get that support, you know, not going on a, you know, a bloody pirate's treasure hunt to find out what grants and incentives are available. Let's just keep it bloody simple, stupid. Um, however, however, what I do know, I, unfortunately, building a business and making money from running a business is very very difficult you just invest more cash back into stock employing people bigger warehouse uh you know r d whatever it is and unfortunately i think the only real way to make good money is to sell a business have a liquidity day and then go again and do it with your own money much faster much quicker um and i it annoys me that that is how it is it's a bit of a shame that really because when you look at sort of the massive companies that the USA has um, started, and like co compared to the USA, the the UK just sort of has so few massive companies, and it, it, it could be down to the to what you just said, really. It's, um, yeah, it's turnover the, taxes. We tax turnover rather than profit. Um, yeah. You know, we pay horrific business rates, horrific amounts of VAT, and horrific national insurance contributions, horrific insurance premium tax, and they're just the first four turnover taxes that have come to my head, of which there are bloody many. Fuel, fuel taxes, um, green levy taxes on your electric bill, all yeah. of these stupid turnover taxes which stop businesses investing in their business what do most entrepreneurs want to do keep growing their business and they just reinvest it back in anyway but they should be given the choice because they are much more frugal and much more cost effective with their money than governments governments take people's money and then invest it so poorly that you get terrible rates of return on it um, governments should be taking it as little as physically possible and allowing the economy to grow with people using their own cash I mean, we just did our VAT return for the last quarter, and that was thirty nine thousand. And it's sort of, it feels like, like you said, the, the the government doesn't know how to invest the money, so it just feels like it's just money wasted given to them. Yeah, I feel for you, mate. I know that oh, this this week alone, I've paid one hundred and sixty thousand pounds in turnover taxes to the government. You know, dressed up in all their different ways. They can. I just think. I could have employed so many more people. And, you know, turnover taxes is what depresses wages, in my opinion, especially in the service sector, which you're not in. But, you know, you go to restaurants that are just about surviving because of turnover taxes, um, which are the highest in Europe. You know, you go to bloody to, to Ireland or Spain, they're paying much lower turnover taxes on service, uh, hospitality and leisure, and that's why their restaurants always survive longer. Um, but anyway, look, I think we've come to a close. Hopefully we're on alignment on that. Uh, thanks for being on the Business Broadcast. Where can people find find you, Ben, if they want to go and yeah, so make a robot. LEDs? Yeah, if they want to be yeah, in the so next the, version of uh, Robot Wars. So the best place is to go on our website. So that's switchelectronics.co.uk. Um, you can go on eBay and Amazon, but we would definitely prefer you oh, to no, go. No, 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 no. No one's allowed oh, to go on that. No, that's, that's they good. don't need any more. We want them to go direct. We'll put a link yeah, in, the show yeah, notes in the description. Mm. Only click that link. If you if you are listening or watching this, you dare give Zuckerberg any more. Not Zuckerberg. What's the other one? Bezos. Have you seen the state of yeah, Bezos yeah. these days? What? He's like Benjamin Button. He's aging backwards, that fella. <laughs> He's got a bit of support, but. Have you not seen him recently? Well, I know he looks buff. Oh, yeah. he's gone well buff anyway. Yeah, but don't click the link if it's on Amazon. Only go direct to the link that we're going to give you to go and check I'll out the other thing is like business. TikTok shops are going to be the next big thing. I hope you're looking at that. Yes, TikTok shop could be good for you, Ben. 
they come in for yeah we, we, we've, we haven't got one but yeah it's uh it's well, they're coming uh, they're coming for amazon yeah. and let me tell you now the chinese government practically owns tiktok and so they've got the funding to win the day mm. Watch this space. Well, there you go. Uh, ben, on the business broadcast, you've got to go and support a fantastic small business. Go and check him out. And click yeah, please buy direct from him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a, that'd be, you know, buy direct. Buy direct. Absolutely. I enjoyed that one. Very yeah. good. He was, an, he was a good guy. I mean, it's, oh, it just amazes me why he can't get his own warehouse. He absolutely bloody could. Like you picked up on though, oh, they're just hard to find. Well, if you have that mentality, no, yeah. it's a bit woo woo, but it, there is something oh, to yeah, that. There is that like, manifesting yeah. thing is true. Like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you find more of what you search for. If you think it's going to be difficult, yep. you're going to get more difficult. I always tell people when it comes to buying property, the first stage on commercial property investment, buy to let property investment, whatever you want to do in property, is just put the viewings, and then you think yeah I, I can make this happen i'll find a way i'll I, you know, i'll get a private investor or i'll i'll structure yeah, yeah. the deal to pay it over a period of time whatever but until you actually get in the car and yeah. go and see the bleeding it makes things, it real then as well, the same it? buying businesses I, yeah. i'm going i see you know we're going we're going up to yorkshire i'm going to see another business next oh, week oh you nearly slipped up and didn't you? you need to give it away well i'm speaking at the ice cream alliance show is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking at the Ice Cream Alliance show. I'm doing two keynotes. Amazing people in the ice cream industry. Can't wait to do it. But on the way up, I'm going to see another business. Yeah, I haven't sorted the funding yet of how I could potentially buy that. But I know that if I go and see it and I like it, I'll make it happen. There you go. There you go. Lessons for wherever you are at in business. If you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please feel free to give it a five-star review wherever you download your podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, and uh, leave comments. I don't know why I'm pointing down. There's nothing there, is there? But leave a comment in the um, yeah. Let us know what you think. Thing. What questions and what would you like changed about the podcast? I'd like to get some sort of regular things to it, like these questions and stuff like that. If there's anything you think we should be asking our guests, hit them in the comments.